In this video, we'll be looking at the G-Scatter Effect Layers panel. Effect layers control the way plants and other assets appear in your scene. To work with effect layers, we first need at least one scatter system present in the outliner, which you can see I've already added here. When you add a scatter system, a default set of effect layers will be applied to get you started, but you can tweak the parameters of each layer. Or add other effect layers found under these four tabs Distribution, Scale, Rotation, and Geometry. Clicking on the Add Effect Layer drop down reveals the effect layers available for each tab, grouped in three sections Basic, Masks, and Objects. Clicking on an effect layer adds it to your stack. For example, let's add a proximity effect layer. To demonstrate this effect working, I'll turn on this cube I have in my Blender Outliner. I'll add the cube as target object in the proximity effect layer panel and adjust the curve and distance multiplier settings until I have the look I'm after. This is a great way to ensure that assets in your scene don't intersect. And now let's add a wave mask effect layer. I'll adjust the distribute on faces density setting so that this effect is more visible. In this way, you can build up a stack of effect layers to achieve the look you want for your scene. Nice. I'll just hide those effects and the cube. OK, moving on. To the right of the Add Effect Layer drop down is the Effect Presets button. This will be covered in more depth in another video, but briefly, you can use the effect presets to store configurations which work on a per effect basis. Next to the Effect Layers Presets button is the Duplicate button. This creates a copy of whichever effect layer is currently selected. First, select an effect layer by clicking on its circle, which will turn blue, and then click on the Duplicate button and select where you want to copy the layer. Depending on the effect layer type, there will be different options available. For example, the Wave Mask effect layer is available in both the Distribution and Scale tabs, so we can copy it to either of those sections. If you want to delete an effect, just select it and then click on the Delete Layer button. And be gone. These layers shall trouble ye no more. When you have more than one effect layer in a stack, the Effect Layer Blending Modes drop down here will allow you to mix them, just like you would in a Photo Editor app. I'll be covering these modes and how they work with Effect Layers in more detail in another video. The Influence slider to the right of Blending Modes does exactly what it suggests, determining how much influence each layer has in the stack from 0 to 1, with 1 being fully visible. For example, I can reduce the effect this wave mask layer has on my scene by sliding it down towards zero, which then allows the distribute on faces layer underneath to emerge. OK, those are the controls for the effect layers panel itself, but each layer also has its own individual controls and options. The first one is the Layer Select button. Clicking on this circle turns it blue, indicating the layer is selected. Next to this is the Layer Roll Up, Roll Down arrow for minimizing and maximizing a layer, which is useful if you have lots of layers in your stack and want to save space and see everything a little more clearly. The symbol next to this arrow is helpful for identifying the type of effect layer you have, while the layer name can be customized by calling it something suitable for your scene. Again, this is really great for keeping your layer stack organized. To the right of the effect layer name, we have the Layer Position arrows. Simply click on these to move the layer up or down in the stack to achieve different looks for the assets in your scene. The eye icon, as you might imagine, controls visibility, which is useful for checking how a layer is affecting the rest of the scene or for working on a layer in isolation. Each effect layer will have its own parameters to play with. I won't go into every one of them in this video, but as an example, the Distribute on Faces effect layer here has Distance Minimum, Density, Viewport Display, and Seed. Again, all of this will be covered in detail in further videos, but please feel free to play with the settings to see how the assets in your scene are affected. Right, you now have a good overview of the Effect Layers panel for GScatter. You've learned how to add and configure effect layers, 
and have also been shown the other options available for controlling the look of assets in your scene. Thanks for watching.